guys in today's video I'm going to show you how to make a bumblebee cake topper so this was a Facebook live video that I did uh, the other week over on my Facebook page you can still catch that over there if you do want to see the full version so this one's going to be a little bit sped up and I'm going to use some polystyrene inside the body because I'm doing this one quite large but if you're going smaller you could probably get away without the polystyrene inside uh, in the Facebook live you can hear me talking a little bit more about the polystyrene balls and the size and the reasoning behind using them. Also, we're going to be using the Saracino modeling paste. You can get it pre-dyed yellow or you can dye it yourself. I actually dyed it myself for this one in the pastels range of colors. Uh, and this is the yellow of the pastels food colors. So I'm going to roll a ball and we are going to put the polystyrene ball inside the ball of yellow paste. So we're going to kind of cup it a little bit so the ball will fit inside. I'm going to add a little bit of water just in there, just to make it a little bit sticky. Pop the polystyrene ball in, give it a good push around. Just make sure you try and push all the creases together. It is difficult to push the crease lines out completely, but on this one, it doesn't matter too much if there's a few in there because we're going to be covering it in lines anyway. So once the ball's fully inside and sealed, we're going to kind of create a bit of a teardrop shape for the very end of the bee like so. Now I'm going to push two skewers into some polystyrene while we work on this and the skewers want to be fairly close in on the body. If they're too far out it won't hold the body up. Again you can hear me talk about it in quite a lot more um, detail over on the Facebook live which is still on the Facebook page. I'm just going to cut the skewers down a little bit in length. The height of them is up to you. I'm pushing them so the point is upwards so it's easy to push the body of our bumblebee onto them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to texture the whole thing. You can either use your Dresden tool to put in tiny little lines like this everywhere. Or if you prefer, you could use this tool, which is a, a Kemp tool. It gives you a slightly different texture, but it will put the texture in quicker. It kind of makes it look fluffier rather than hairier. Or I think it does anyway. We're going to make some little antennas. You really could even do these the day before so they set nice and hard. You can see I've got two already made. To make them, you just take a small ball and we roll it so there's a nice thin point on one end. You can bend the end over or you can have more of a curve on it. It's up to you really what you want these to look like at the end. I'll do one of each just so you can see the difference and then you can decide which you prefer. Now we want a smaller polystyrene ball that we're going to cover in black modeling paste. I'm going to use the Serratino modeling paste again, guys, and it's pre-colored, comes in the black color, which makes it a lot easier. Carefully push it around the polystyrene ball, trying to seal it together the best you can. If you are left with a little join, don't worry, that can just be the back of the head. So now we're going to shape our head. It's going to be pretty rounded in shape. I'm going to push in either side for where I want the eye sockets to be. I'm going to go fairly close to the back of the head with this. Just pulling sort of the nose area down a tiny bit at the front. If the eye sockets aren't prominent enough, you can go over them with a balling tool. You make them pretty big on this one. And I'm just kind of pulling them in at the inner corner a little bit as well. Now I've got a little crack or a little dip in my icing there, so let's turn it into a little bit of a mouth. So we're pressing in a tiny bit with the small end of the balling tool and then just drawing a little line across so it looks like the bee's got a tiny smile. I realise because the paste is black, it, it doesn't show overly well on camera, so apologies that you can't see that very well, guys. We're going to fill the eye sockets with white modeling paste. So you just want a small ball of white. The size of the eye socket you put in is going to determine how big the white needs to be that fills it. Uh, in case you're wondering what the stars bit is at the bottom, that's something that we uh, people can do on the Facebook Live. So apologies, it still kind of shows on the video on here. So once you've got white in both eyes, you're going to take a small ball of black and I'm going to squash that down so that we get a little disc of black for our eye. Now, if you want, you can roll the black out with a rolling pin instead, and you can use a circle cutter. I just had left my circle cutters at home, so I thought I'll just do it by hand instead of using a cutter this time. So they're going to push into each eye. If you want, you can add a bit of colour around the eye. You can put an iris in. I'm just using some coloured edible pens on this. Also, the other option is you could do another disc of a different coloured paste that you could put on before putting the black disc on. And you can mix different colours of pens together on there, you don't have to have just one colour in the eye. Then I'm going to put a small dot of white paste in, in each eye. I realise I've only done the iris on one eye at the moment, I uh, will finish that at the end. And then a smaller dot of white, 
in each eye as well. Now we need to attach the head to the body. I'm gonna use a cocktail stick to just hold it in place. You can get away with attaching it without these, but because it's all done in a live, everything needs to stick together quite quickly for me. And I don't have enough time to kind of hold things in place and let them set without internal structure. So it's gonna make it a little bit firmer. No one's gonna eat this anyway because it has got a polystyrene ball in the middle. So we take a little piece of yellow, same color as the body, and we're gonna just wrap it around the neck area almost like a little scarf, chunky scarf. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna push more of those little fur lines in it everywhere. I'm using the Dresden tool instead of the Kemper tool that I used on the body because it's a smaller area and I'm likely to catch the black of the head with the Kemper tool and then I'll sort of scuff up all the black. So that's why we're doing it that way. I'm just putting a cocktail stick in where I want the wings to go so that I've got a hole in place for later. Then we're gonna add a tiny bit of color. So I'm using my petal dust palettes. Uh, we do have these in the shop. Most of the things, guys, that I use in the videos are things that I do sell on my website, which is just Zoe's Fancy Cakes. I'll put a link below the video as well so you guys know where you can find it. And these are the petal craft palettes. So I'm going for like a darker yellow and we're just dusting kind of on the areas that we want to be a little bit darker. So between kind of the crease of the two yellow bits. I'm also gonna add a tiny bit of black, um, just a little bit, not much. I'm just using the Sylvia Mancini brushes that I have for this. I do like them, but you can use whichever brushes you want, guys. Apologies if you can hear the dog snoring in the background. I'm actually using a fractal loose dust for the stripe on the body. You can, if you want, put a strip of black modeling paste on. That would work absolutely fine. I just wanted to use dust because I didn't want a full solid band. So I thought the dust worked better for that. I'm using the loose dust rather than the palette I was using before for this one just because when it's a much bigger area it's easier to use a loose dust. The palettes are great for like quite small areas. I'm just going to put a couple of little holes in the top of its head ready for the little antennas to go in later. And this is, you can use a cocktail stick if you want but this is a Xerat K2220 tool I think is what it's called. Again you can get them on, on my website. We'll just pop a tiny bit of water in there. You can use edible glue if you prefer to rather than water. And then you're gonna put your little antennas in. Just make sure that they are set nice and firm before you put them in, otherwise they're just gonna flop over and not hold their shape. Now, depending on what you want to do with yours, you can color the sticks. So I've got edible pens and I just put a little bit of green at the bottom and then I put black a little bit higher up. Now, with my last one, the one that I did before the video, um, I kind of put it in a little grass scenery, so the grass covered the bottom of its legs, so you would only see the top bit. Again, I, I talk about that quite a lot more on the Facebook Live. I don't want to kind of bore you too much in this video, so I'll keep this a quicker video. If you want to watch the full length, we'll go to the Zoe's Fancy Cakes Facebook page. I think all the videos are maybe in a section called Live across the top tab, and you can find them in there. We're just going to wrap the top part of this stick in black modeling paste. Obviously, the more paste you have, the thicker that leg is going to become. I've kept mine with fairly chunky legs, but you can go much thinner if you want. And I've tried to push it in kind of about the middle so that it's thinner in the middle. And then I'm going to take a little oval of the yellow and I'm going to stick it on near the top part of the leg. So I want it to look like it's little pollen sack or all the pollen that is collected that's stuck to its leg. And you're going to do the same on both back legs. Then it's going to need some more little legs. Now you can stick them on without the cocktail sticks like what I'm doing, but again, I just wanted to make sure it's stuck and clung quite quickly, so these help me and no one's going to be eating this one. So I just put a, a small part of a cocktail stick in each place that I wanted to add a leg. If these are too chunky, you can add a wire, or like I say, you can stick the legs on without having these bits on. As long as the legs aren't too big and too heavy, they should hold on without the cocktail sticks. So we're just going to take some little teardrop shapes for each leg. I'm just gonna push a hole in the end so that I know it will fit easily on the cocktail stick. We're gonna put a line about halfway up and then one a little bit further down as well so that our leg has got some little sort of joint bits in it. I'm gonna push it up onto the cocktail stick. You can add a bit of water or edible glue there to hold it in place as well. And if you can, just bend the very end of the foot across and we'll do the same with the one at the front. And then you just do the same on the other side as well, guys. But you can play around with the positioning of where you want the legs to go as well. So that's pretty much most of the bee done. It just needs some wings. Now, I apologize, guys, that I don't show you how to make the wings in this particular video. 
but we do have a video on here already showing you how to make these. These are wire and gelatin, and I'll put a link now for that video so that you can see how to make the wings. And you can see the wings on my other bee that I made earlier as well. And then I almost forgot I gave the last one some pink cheeks, so let's add a little bit of pink dust. I think I used the claret, the fractal claret colored one on the cheeks for this one. And there they are, all done. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, don't forget if you do want to see it in more detail, the full length one when I did it live, you can find that over on Zoe's Fancy Cakes Facebook page. And I do love to see all your pictures of your creations, what you've made from the videos, and you can tag me across all your different social media uh, platforms and I will see those. Thanks again guys, see you next time. If you like the video be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.